Hello my fellow working class heroes, good day. I am Carlo and welcome to Carlo Excels. In this episode, we'll talk about item analysis. Specifically, we'll talk about the item difficulty index part of item analysis. In this video, we'll focus less on the calculation of the item difficulty index and more on the meaning behind the item difficulty index so that you'll properly understand how to interpret the difficulty of your test items based on the item difficulty index. Before anything else, if you're new to this channel, hello, this is Carlo Excels, a channel that is dedicated to teaching my fellow teachers here in the Philippines Microsoft Excel. Occasionally, I also create additional lessons like this that will be helpful for my fellow teachers. Please like this video and share this video to your fellow teachers and drop a comment down below. It will really help with the YouTube algorithm and help those who are searching for this to find this. Thank you. The best way to start with this discussion is to first review why we do assessments in the first place. Assessment, in essence, is a tool that we teachers use. In our case, we use this tool to gather evidence of student learning. This evidence is what we can then use to make the proper decisions regarding instruction. In other words, assessment is a means, not an end. After years of being a student and being a teacher, it's very easy to forget. And it's very easy to have it the other way around. No, learning is not the means with the exam and the grade being the end. We should always remember that assessment is the means and learning is the end. Now, we mentioned that assessment is a tool. Just like any other tool, assessments will be useless to us as a tool if they do not fulfill their purpose. Take a sieve, for example. A sieve is a tool that is mainly used to separate the small granular parts of a substance from the bigger parts. A sieve that does not fulfill this purpose is useless to us. Of course, it goes without saying that a sieve that lets everything in is useless. A sieve that lets nothing in is also useless. It's the same way with our assessments. An assessment, as a tool, will not be that useful to us and will give us not much data for decision making if everyone, or almost everyone, gets the question correct. It will also not be that useful to use and will not give us much data for decision making if everyone, or almost everyone, gets the question wrong. And that is what the item difficulty index is for. The item difficulty index will tell us how easy or how difficult an item on a test is. We want the difficulty of each item on our test to be as moderate as we can possibly make it. And if the item is too difficult or too easy, then based on what the item is asking, we can then figure out which parts of the lesson were properly grasped by the students and which parts were not properly grasped by the students. Please note, of course, that just because an item is easy, it doesn't necessarily mean that the item is bad. Just because an item is hard, it doesn't necessarily mean that the item is bad. It all depends on your goals when you wrote the item. If you specifically made the item to be easy or hard and it turned out exactly the way you meant it, then that's good. If it didn't, then you may have a problem there. So how then do you assess item difficulty? Well, there's the intuitive and simple way and there's the slightly more difficult but better way. This is probably what most teachers will do when assessing the difficulty of their item, which is they'll simply count the number of correct scores. On the screen, you'll see this in action. So, this is a dichotomous item, meaning an item of simple ones and zeros or corrects and wrongs. What you can simply do here is count the number of people who got the item correct, divide it by the total number of test takers, and you get a percentage. The higher the percentage, the easier the item. Here's a non-dichotomous item, meaning an item that has varying degrees or levels of correctness. In this case, what you can do here is sum up all the scores and then divide the results by the total highest possible score and you get a percentage. The higher the percentage, the easier the item. But this isn't the best way to assess the difficulty of an item. If you line up the results of the test, meaning the total scores of the students, in a straight line arranged from highest scores to lowest scores, you'll easily see the spectrum of students' ability or understanding as far as the whole test is concerned. Naturally, on one extreme side of this line, you have students with high scores on the test. It may be safe to assume that these are the students who have studied for this test and know the subject material that this test is measuring. And on the other extreme side of the line, you have students with low scores on the test. It may be safe to assume that these are the students who have not studied for this test and have not absorbed the subject material that this test is measuring. The problem is the middle part of the line. In the middle part of the line, you have students that may actually know the subject material and have studied, but maybe they just have poor test-taking skills or poor comprehension so that even if they know the answer, they still got the answers wrong. 
in the middle part of the line, you may also have students that actually do not know the subject material or have not studied, but maybe they just have very good test-taking skills or they're good at eliminating choices from multiple choice items or they have good comprehension skills so that even if they do not know the answers, they still got the questions correct. And that is why in the standard practice of item difficulty analysis, we remove the middle part to remove uncertainties. We only assess the extremes. We just take the students with the highest scores, which we'll call the high group, and the students with the lowest scores, which we'll call the low group. We'll then assess just them. That way, when we assess the difficulty of our items, we can assess it based on knowledge of the subject material and not based on comprehension or test-taking abilities. Okay, how many students should be in the high group and how many students should be in the low group? The standard practice is 27% of the total number of students who took the test. The high group shall be the highest scoring 27% and the low group shall be the lowest scoring 27%. Also, please make sure that both groups have an equal number of students. Consider the example on the screen right now. Let's say that we have 100 students who took the exam. 27% of 100 is of course 27, so we have 27 students in the high group and 27 students in the low group. Next, consider the illustration on the screen right now. Let's say that on a particular test item, all of the students in the high group got the answer right, and all of the students in the low group got it wrong. A situation like this is actually considered to be the most ideal. If the question is written correctly, then all of the students in the high group, meaning the students who showed up to class, did their duties, and studied their lessons, should be able to get the answer to the item. And again, if the question is written correctly, then all of the students in the low group, meaning the students who have not properly absorbed the lessons, should not be able to get the answer to the item. And so, in this case, the difficulty of the test item is considered to be moderate because around half of the total students in both the high group and the low group got the answer right. Now, let's consider this next illustration on the screen right now. In this particular test item, all of the students in the high group got the answer right and more than half of the students in the low group got the answer right as well. In this case, the test item is considered to be easy. More than 75% of the total students in both the high group and low group got the answer right. The test item is so easy that even the majority of the students in the low group got the answer right. Now let's consider this third illustration on the screen right now. In this particular test item, all of the students in the low group got the answer wrong and more than half of the students in the high group also got the answer wrong. In this case, the test item is considered to be difficult. Less than 25% of the total students in both the high group and the low group got the answer right. The item is so difficult that even the majority of the students in the high group got the answer wrong. Now, it's time to talk about the formula in the calculation process to determine item difficulty. It's time to talk about the item difficulty index. But before we go there, some of you may be asking, why do we need to calculate the item difficulty index? Why can't we just simply continue counting the number of students who got the item correct versus the number of students who got the item wrong? There are actually a few advantages when calculating the item difficulty index. By getting the item difficulty index, it'll be much easier for us to compare difficulties between items. It'll be easier for us to determine which item is easier or more difficult compared to others. Also, calculating the item difficulty index is actually very easy to automate. Spreadsheet programs and statistical software allow us to quickly and easily obtain the item difficulty index of all of the items on a test. Years ago, calculating the item difficulty index of all the items was long and tiring, but doing it is actually much easier and faster now than calculating it manually. Also, speaking of automation, this channel has an all-in-one item analysis template that helps by calculating the internal consistency, item difficulty index, item discrimination index, and multiple choice distractor analysis. If you are interested in this free, easy-to-use tool, please check the descriptions down below and you'll find there a link to the video that talks about the Carlo Excel's all-in-one item analysis template. You'll also be able to download it there free of charge, no strings attached. The formula for the item difficulty index can be seen on the screen right now. You may want to pause the video to write it down somewhere. The formula is the total points obtained by the high group plus the total points obtained by the low group minus the quantity of the number of students in both groups times the lowest possible score in the item. And then all of that is divided by the total number of students in both groups times the quantity of the highest possible score in the item minus the lowest possible score in the item. The result of this calculation is a number between 0 and 1. 
Based on this, and based on the discussions we had a while ago regarding item difficulty, having a result of 0.75 or higher indicates that the item is easy. Having a result of 0.25 or less indicates that the item is difficult. Having a result anywhere between 0.75 and 0.25 indicates that the item has moderate difficulty. Please note that the higher the number is, the easier the item is. So if you have two items, one with an item difficulty index of 0.6 and another with an item difficulty index of 0.4, although both of them are considered to be moderately difficult, the item with the 0.6 item difficulty index can be considered as the easier item of the two. Based on these, we can say that the easiest item possible has an item difficulty index of 1, which means that all of the students from both the high group and the low group were able to answer the item correctly. The most difficult item possible has an item difficulty index of 0, which means that all students from both the high group and the low group got the item wrong. And the sweet spot is 0.5, which indicates an item with perfectly moderate difficulty. Let's consider this example on the screen right now. You may pause the video if you want to take the time to perform the calculation yourself. This item is a dichotomous item with the highest possible score of 1 and a lowest possible score of 0. There are 27 students in the high group and 27 students in the low group which makes for 54 total students across both groups. If you total the scores of everyone in the high group, the result will be 25. And if you total the scores of everyone in the low group, the result will be 3. After applying the formula, the item difficulty index for this test item is 0.5185. This indicates that this item's difficulty is moderate. And let's consider this example on the screen right now. Again, you may pause the video if you want to take the time to perform the calculation yourself. This item is a non-dichotomous item with the highest possible score of 5 and a lowest possible score of 0. There are 27 students in the high group and 27 students in the low group, which makes for 54 total students across both groups. If you total the scores of everyone in the high group, the result will be 38. And if you total the scores of everyone in the low group, the result will be 9. After applying the formula, the item difficulty index for this item is 0.1741. This indicates that this item is a difficult test item. So as we are about to end our discussion on the item difficulty index, let me state that the next lesson will feature the item discrimination index. So please subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss that lesson when it comes. So that's it for this video lesson on the item difficulty index. I really hope I earned your subscription today. Once again, I am Carlo and this is Carlo Excels. Thank you very much for watching.